Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program. In this video I examine the use of a shuttle derived launch vehicle to launch the Apollo moon mission complete with the S-4B stage. So you see on top there the upper part of the Saturn V rocket that launched the Apollo mission to moon. We have the Apollo command module, the lunar module, and the S-4B stage that does the lunar transfer. But then we have the space shuttle's external tank and the four segment boosters that the space shuttle use plus my special little shuttle engine mouse that I've got on the side there that carries the three shuttle main engines and in theory recovers them though that has met with mixed success but uh, yeah that's what it's supposed to do there I described that in a video on the shuttle drive launch vehicle and uh, you'll have to watch that for further details but uh, there are some flaws in it and that it doesn't connect to the upper attachment mount and stuff, such things like that. But anyway, in principle, there's a shuttle drive launch vehicle and we see the booster separation. And the question is, can it actually launch the Apollo mission? Unfortunately, the Delta V stats that I was seeing in the VAB didn't make any sense. So I actually had to launch it to see whether we had enough Delta V or not. It is a sort of complicated setup. And there goes the launch escape system. Uh, so, and also it's a complicated trajectory because of the long burn with the space shuttle main engines. Now, of course, we could have just used SLS. SLS is technically a shuttle derived launch vehicle, but not exactly. And uh, even though I thought that the balance would be fine given that the payload is uh, pulling the center mass further forward, it still seems sort of jittery there, as you can see. But anyway, um, as we get closer to orbit, it looks like we don't have enough delta V. And you can see the engine shut down there. We have an additional problem here in that I put that stage on the wrong node so we couldn't decouple. So anyway, but we didn't have enough Delta V anyway it turned out. So I came up with a novel solution and I made this video basically to present this novel solution to you. The novel solution is not SLS with a five segment booster and larger external tank and four engines, which probably would work. The novel solution is three boosters. Will three boosters work? That is the question. And there is this magnificent configuration. I don't know if anybody else has tried it. Probably somebody else must have tried this before, but uh, I have a great love of asymmetry myself, so uh, I must try this sort of thing. I can't believe I haven't tried it before. Maybe I have tried it before and I just have really bad memory. Anyway, but uh, here we go. Will we have enough Delta V with this situation? Now, you might have thought that this would flip out. In fact, I initially thought that maybe it would. It's a little bit hard to handle. I wouldn't recommend NASA actually do this necessarily. Uh, Stress-wise, it might not be too bad. It might actually balance out the SSMEs a bit uh, during Max-Q and all that. So it might reduce stress, but then it's a pretty heavy mass on one side. So it's tough to say. Now, to some extent, having the payload on top pulls the center mass up a little bit and that helps the thrust of the SRBs to point through the center of mass uh, helping putting this SRB on one side but then again the SRB mass itself is much heavier than the stuff that we have on top the SRB starts out at more than 500 tons the stuff on top is much less than that I accidentally staged the launch escape system at the same time as the SRBs that wasn't supposed to happen but it's all right just not a big difference anyway so off they go and we continue. Will we make it this time? Will this be better? I mean, it better. It had better be better with an extra SRB, but is it enough? That is the question. Now, I made a little mistake as uh, this is running out here. I wanted to uh, reduce the pitch a little bit, but, but I did it too dramatically, and uh, we sort of had slight balance problems there. We can't do the pitch that dramatically that quickly, so we did a roll. It probably doesn't waste too much Delta V to do this roll. But it was a little bit of a waste. This time we decoupled properly. Got that on the right node on the procedural fairing. And the J2 continues. It is sort of a problem for the engine mouse that, you know, we're leaving it on a suborbital trajectory. I don't know whether it would be able to recover the engines quite as well on this trajectory as opposed to from orbit. That's something else to test. But anyway, we got to orbit with about 2,900 meters per second, which is not enough to transfer to the moon. We need 3,130 or so. So this is not good enough. And probably we would want some margin on that 3,130. 
But a lot of that was because of my bad trajectory. So I haven't flown a stack like this with three SRBs on it. So need to refine that. And so this time, knowing what mistakes I made last time, I tried for a better trajectory. And of course, minus one flip. So here we go again. Now, uh, just a warning, I'm not going to try and do the entire Apollo mission. We're just verifying that this can actually get the stack up to orbit and we can transfer to the moon. As long as we make the transfer to the moon, the rest is sort of a fate accompli as far as I'm concerned. While the two-booster version clearly did not impart enough velocity to the mission so that the moon mission could be accomplished, um, possibly with a lighter moon mission, like for instance the Soviet one, if the Soviet moon mission was placed on top of this J2, then maybe that could have worked out. That'd be light enough, I think, uh, to manage. We should try that sometime. Though I have other plans for mix and match missions. Those will be coming up. But uh, there go the three boosters. I'm just happy with the three booster configuration. We're launching at nighttime this time to line up with the moon. Last time we weren't lined up with the moon at all, so that's why it's a nighttime launch here. Mostly with this, I'm amused by the three booster configuration, to be honest. It's not very practical for shuttle missions. First of all, it would put too much stress through a maximum dynamic pressure. Uh, second of all, it wouldn't do anything for the shuttle. The shuttle couldn't fit really heavy things in its bay anyway. Uh, 25 tons or 30 tons, its current payload capacity would be enough in it. Bringing it to a higher orbit really doesn't do anything for it either. Uh, its operations were all lower, low Earth orbit, and there's nothing it really needed to do in a slightly higher orbit. It couldn't get to the moon with three boosters. I'll demonstrate that in the future. But yeah, here we go, getting our moon transfer. So no real point in putting three boosters with the shuttle, but for a payload like this, with the payload on top, you get more payload capacity, of course. As long as the payload's on top, you're not constrained by the shuttle bay or anything like that. Anyway, we got our translunar injection. Uh, this was successful. Not a whole lot of margin. So, yeah, maybe not advisable for NASA to do this. But an amusing test nonetheless. I hope you agree. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.